Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we have something really interesting. I saw this on a German printing channel, couldn't understand a word he said, but the print results spoke for themselves. The Two Trees Sapphire S, a little 200 millimeter cubed core XY critter that we're going to try to play with tonight. This was provided to me by Banggood. They sent me an email out of the blue and say, would you like to review this printer? And I said, hell yes. <laughs> I've been trying to figure out a way to get one of these. And we also got some Alien Ooze. This is Alien Slacker's new filament. I bought this. Um, it's made by IC3D specifically for Alien Slacker. And it's got that nice little transparent Alien Ooze green color. So that's going to be what we're going to make our test prints with today. So stay tuned as I open the box. I wish more companies would do this, but they include an honest to goodness, legit manual, like full, you know, 11 by 17 half fold color manual with decent directions. At least they appear decent. We'll see if they actually match the printer, but not bad. Good job, two trees. We got some goodie boxes, which we'll go to in a second. We have a very nice three point flat bed. Hey Mark, if you're watching my YouTube, please turn off your email. <laughs> His email is stuck in a loop. He keeps sending me the same message over and over again. He's, uh, I think I've got like 25 copies. <laughs> um, it is nice and flat, no warp. Um, it's a 24 volt heat bed, sticker attached directly to the aluminum. This is your carriage plate, which is a really nice heavy piece aluminum. That is not gonna warp ever in your life. This will never warp. <laughs> You'd have to drop a nuke on that to warp that. Your rails, um, cable management, smooth rods, lead screw, which does appear to be flat. Um, they put the effort in to laser etch their stepper motor, so that shows a, a, an attention to quality that I hope is prevalent in the rest of the kit. The base of the printer is mostly assembled. It's got these really oddball, like, like dice connectors to join the extrusions together. I've never seen it done like that before. That's interesting. So you put the wrench through the holes in the dice to a bolt that bolts into this, and you do. So you have a bolt here and a bolt here. That's interesting. Um, a little advice, two trees. If you're going to use acrylic, make it interesting. So how about making this like a transparent blue acrylic? So now not only will it look cool, it'll be blue like sapphire, and you'll be able to see through the top of the printer there, and you'll be able to see all the inner workings, which might actually be pretty interesting. So if you're going to use acrylic, make it interesting. You know, use a transparent blue acrylic. The frame is aluminum, just the decorative part on the top here is, the mounting part is acrylic. And then your top frame is a solid hunk of aluminum nice and thick I do not anticipate any problems with that and it does have linear rails oh yeah sexy my first printer with linear rails I'm kind of excited about that the core XY kinematic pivot points here are all machined so that is all metal very very nice very cool I look forward to this so this is where your hot end is going to mount on its rail as well so this Ought to be interesting stay tuned can't let you guys miss the porn huh <laughs> oh yeah nice and clean they pre-peeled the edge of it because it's underneath the metal so that was nice <laughs> so the goodie boxes you have your everything is marked all the bags are individually labeled so that you know what they are and you can reference that in the instructions. This one's not labeled, but it's obvious. It's the USB cable. But everything is marked. Looks like there's even heat sinks that are blue, anodized. Nice. PTFE tube. Come on. Capricorn tube. It's blue. <laughs> get, get with that blue theme. That's nice. Your belts, they look decent. They even have a branded 16 gig USB aluminum drive. That's nice. Uh, they have a Titan Air, uh, Titan extruder that is also branded. So it says two trees on the cover. It's pretty nice. And I don't know if this was intentional or accidental, but I got some Sapphire Blue PLA, and it's a decent sample. I like that a lot. 1.75 millimeter PLA, 0.2 kilograms. So yeah, good PLA to go with it. 
So let's get started. The first step is to install the four profiles onto the base. This is your base. So we're going to install the four profiles using the M58 screws and then we will install all the smooth rods and the lead screws into the base of the printer. Um, information for two trees. Um, I've already told you you should use clear acrylic here. Don't use black. If you're, if you're going to use acrylic, if you're not going to use aluminum, if you're going to use acrylic, go with the theme here. Okay, Transparent blue acrylic would look really slick here. Maybe even a little RGB lighting inside. You know, you can you can really do a lot with this if you do it right. You might even want to look into a um, putting a window in the power supply so that we can see, have the power supply mounted so that we can see the inside of the power supply. You, know, you can go you can go a lot with this if you want to really make it pretty slick. And um, also uh, something you should add to your directions. Every one of these is loose. Every single one. I'm assuming they're not supposed to be loose. But it looks like it's a simple matter of tightening up the bolts that run through these little cube corners. So I would update your instructions to specify to your users to tighten these up. Alrighty, it's the it's the sadomasochistic porn time. So place your bets. Can I get it all off in one piece? Probably not. The screws are probably gonna mess things up. Well maybe not. These are definitely gonna be tough. Oh, I do have to say, that satin black look does actually look pretty nice. It's got a satin finish on there that's not bad looking. I don't like those. I prefer the hard ones. So I may replace those. Yeah, these are pinched. So those are not going to come off cleanly. Yeah, I'm going to have to unbolt those to get all that plastic out of there. I'm not going to make you guys watch this. It's coming off ugly. So the bag marked top set screws has eight screws. So fours for the bottom and fours for the top. This is interesting the way the acrylic actually interlocks with the rest of the machine. So this here actually slots in the rail. So you line it up with that and actually slot it in there just like that. That's actually pretty neat. So we got the four verticals installed, everything tightened up, and we have all of our lead screws installed. I did lift up these couplers off the stepper a little bit so that the rods don't touch the stepper shaft, which you don't want. So I adjusted those, but that's just normal 3D printing stuff. The next step is to install the, the carriage plate for the Z-axis for the bed. And you also have to install the heated build plate onto that, but they do not specify that in the instructions. They say install the heated bed platform and they show installing the carriage with the heater already installed so you will need to install the um, the actual print surface onto the carriage at this stage which is just your three bolts with your knobs and springs alrighty as you can see the bed is installed I did replace the springs with my preferred die compression springs which are flatter but I do have to say that the springs they include look actually pretty nice and they are pretty darn stiff so don't be afraid to use the springs it comes with. I don't think that's a problem. The um, next step is to install the pulley drives for your X and Y axis. They do specify it's important to make sure these have these are asymmetrical. You have the shaft that attaches to the rod, and then you have the actual pulley drive unit itself. And it is important to make sure they are right. So if we consider the shaft portion to be down, your Y axis needs to be right side up and your x-axis needs to be upside down. So it's important to get them right. So gears down, gears up for right and left. Hey Sapphire, the, um, well first of all, the screws for the top and bottom are marked as top set screws. This should be marked as top and bottom set screws since you need to use four of these for the bottom and four of these for the top for securing the frame. Also on step five, it wants me to use M46s and M416s, but there's no bag with those in it. I'm assuming that those are the ones that are in here. 
there are a bag of tools and some extra screws and hammer nuts and stuff. I see one long one in here, so I'm assuming this is my M46s and my M416. These should be marked separately. I would have these screws in a separate bag from the tools and actually have a label on it saying these are your M46s, your M416s, etc. You know, because um, I usually this is spare parts and bits in most printers. I have 90 printers. This is usually spare parts and bits, and it was unclear where I get those screws from. So at the minimum, tell us in the instructions which bag to get the screws out of. Hey, two trees. Another area that was lacking on your instructions is that it was not quite clear how this was installed. Apparently, it's with three T nuts, two T nuts on the M6s, which makes sense, and then. I was looking for a nut for the M16, but the only thing that made sense was to, oh, wait a minute, there's a nut. <laughs> ah. So they do include a 16, a nut for the um, the M416, but that's that needs to be clarified on the instructions, please. Definitely need to work on the QC a little bit before you ship these out of the warehouse, two trees. I'm finding a lot of bolts are loose, including all the bolts holding the Ledger X board onto the base of the machine. All four nuts were loose. So you really got to make sure that these bolts are tightened up. Okay, for anybody else making this printer, the hardware to attach the front fascia and display screen to the printer is inside with the USB cable. It would be nice if the instructions told me that. So that's where those parts are, your M6s, your M16s, um, your square nut and your two hammer nuts to attach the front face are in the bag with the USB extension cable. Your positive power wire going to your power switch was backwards so it did not line up correctly so that when you push the plug on it actually pushed the wire right out of the socket. So that's another QC thing you gotta check on. Not a big deal, just quality control. Hey two trees. The board's really loose. I had to tighten up all four nuts to get that board in there. And now I have to install this. This cable is as long as 60% of this printer. And you have all of this empty space. And that USB cable could easily move this board over to here and still reach there just fine. So why in the world did you butt this board right up against the edge where it's a royal pain in the stinking butt to install this ribbon cable? You could have moved that board down and over to here, right here, at an angle even. You could have put that board right here and everything would have been easy to install. But you jammed it right up against the case siding here. That's a pain in the butt. <laughs> if I'd have known that, I don't know what I would have done. Maybe I would have left this off or something. I don't know. That's a, that's annoying. So it looks like you got to plug in the ribbon cable before you install the front face, or you're going to have a heck of a time getting that ribbon cable in there. Just a word of advice, you know, make that a little easier. I would put that hex for few for users who are going to build this printer. Here's what I would do: the square nut. Put it in place for the M416 and then put a piece of tape over it, okay? Install the ribbon cable first, then put the face on and put the bolts in. That'll be a lot easier. Another suggestion, two trees. Um, put a, put two holes, drill two holes right in the side of this here. Or right here actually, on top would probably be better. Or on the side, either one. But drill two holes into this so that I can have the wire sit here like this and then wrap a zip tie through the plate and the wire to act as tension relief so that these wires don't end up wiggling back and forth which will cause them to fail eventually. Just a suggestion, I would advise doing that. The top is installed. X moves like it's on a bed of air. That is so, look how smooth that is. I'm just, just flicking it back and forth. Yeah, why? Not quite as smooth. So I think there might be a slight alignment issue of these rails. I might have to loosen it and adjust it a little bit. We'll see, but man, that rides nice. That's what I get for not paying attention. It does tell you what bag to put it in. 
Yeah, it tells me it's in that bag there. I just didn't realize that's what it was referring to. Does the other one tell you as well? No, it does not. Okay. So just do more of this with everything. So slap a sticker on those other bags and put those same tags there. Well, there's a slight change to your directions. You have step seven as being installing the ZN stop. Well, there's a problem with that. That's after the step to install the top of the printer. Your original instructions refer to a two-piece end stop unit. This is a one-piece, which means I need to put this on before I put the top of the printer on because now I can't put it on. It's one piece. That's just slightly annoying. <laughs> <laughs> now it's time to install the Titan extruder. So we're going to install that next. And um, I would prefer, guys, if you made this out of metal. I mean, plastic's okay. It's just an extruder. There's not a whole lot of load on it. But I would just prefer this to be made out of metal. You know, if I bump it or something like that, I don't want this to break. We are now installing the belts. They actually make a surprising amount of sense once you realize what you're doing. You basically, you start at the front of one and the back of the other side, and then the front of this side and the back of this side. You move around the entire machine except for the front. That actually makes a surprisingly large amount of sense. Two trees, don't skimp out on the zip ties. You need to double the number of zip ties you include because you need two zip ties per connection of the belt. If you use one, you stand a chance of skipping, so you need to double the number of zip ties you include. There we go. Belts are installed, and the kinematics now works. If I turn one, it moves diagonally. If I turn the other one, it moves diagonally the other way. And if I turn both, it moves sideways or front to back. So if I put them opposite directions, you get front to back. If I make them both go the same direction, you get left and right. That's pretty cool. So, on to the next step. Okay, the feet are installed. The extruder is installed. The, the feeder unit, the Titan. The spool holder is installed. I believe construction's basically finished. Uh, next step will be wiring, is my guess. That's done. Yes. Next step is wiring and heat sinks. Oh, it looks like these are TMC 2100. It says they're TMC 2100s, so they might be TMC 2100 knockoffs. So this thing might actually be quiet. Cool. So, stay tuned. <laughs> Word of advice as you're wiring these things up, and I just use zip ties instead of trying to use that loom, which is a pain in the butt. But, um... Make sure you mark your cables before you bundle them. So we'll just put a little piece of tape on the end of the cable, tell you whether it's X, Y, or Z. So this way is X, this way is Y, and the up and down, this one here is Z. The extruder is different from the rest, so you don't have to worry about that. It's the one that's black on black. But if yours is the same, make sure you mark it. And as far as the rest of them, the one with four wires going into it is your parts cooling fan, and the slightly thicker single set of wires is your hot end fan. And of course the little itty bitty thin one that is your thermistor and everything else is self-explanatory so i am now doing my wire management and getting all these wires that will run into this hole here inside the printer okay guys when you build this printer ignore the part of the instructions that says install the cooling fan for the main printing board because it's in the way of installing these wires <laughs> and a couple others so just skip that part of the instructions and install the cooling fan last Hey, two trees, you include this fan to cool off the main board, but you provide no instructions as to where this fan plugs in. <laughs> I have no clue where to plug this in onto this board. Might want to update your instructions. The printer is actually not that bad, although you really need to make some of these wires a little bit longer. Um, namely, your end stop wires. Z is plenty, but X and Y are a little on the short side. And the wires for the bed thermistor, little on the short side. Um, those three need to be longer. The rest of them are fine. But I don't even know where to plug this in. The 
the printer is built, it works. I had no major issues, lots of minor issues with the directions not being complete. Um, when you install the ribbon cable for the screen, make sure blue is out. I had mine blue in and it didn't work, of course. Uh, a very nice touch screen, I'm pleased by it. The printer is able to go quite fast. I had this going 80 or 90 millimeters per second printing this. And it seemed to handle it okay. I had some gaps forming when I increased the speed, so I had to increase the temperature a little bit. No problem though, it handled it okay. I am getting a tiny bit of noise, but I think I have a little bit of belt rubbing going on here, so I'm going to adjust those to fix that. And I also think that, um, I think maybe these Y rails are not quite perfectly aligned right, because the Y axis feels rougher than the um, X axis. There we go. It would need an adjustment. But in general, I'm pleased. I think this printer absolutely has some potential. And I think I'm going to have fun playing with it. So stay tuned for more. I'll probably add another little clip after this with some of the prints after I print it with it for the next week.